these uh, big deviants is all catching hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It don't matter who Diddy or whoever you is, T.G. Jakes, any of them. The, all, every, all lies will be exposed. That's all. Federal judge is now refusing to grant Sean Diddy Combs bail. Today I'm announcing the unsealing of a three count indictment, charging Sean Combs with racketeering conspiracy, sex picking, interstate transportation for prostitution. Come to, coming to you right now with special coverage regarding the arrest and indictment of Sean Diddy Combs. Combs abused and exploited women and other people for years. These dubbed freak offs are a big part of the indictment, charging him with racketeering and trafficking. He's, he's not guilty. He's innocent of these charges. I take it. Well, you guys, Cat Williams said it at the beginning of the year. And so in the words of Onika Petty, shit gonna get uglier than Ken Barbie. Okay. And I just had to play that because Diddy got arrested and Diddy's face is going to be turning into this face right here. And if you don't know who this is, this is Woody. Woody is like one of the biggest snitches out right now. And Diddy is about to be snitching on everybody. So let's talk about it. Okay, you guys. So like I said in the beginning of the video, Cat Williams said at the beginning of the year of 2024, is gonna be the year of exposure everybody who was telling stories everybody who has something to do with something everything is gonna be exposed and diddy getting locked up is the start of a lot of things and people unfolding because they already said that they're gonna be looking at the people who was associated with diddy to see what was going on and y'all know they've been said td jake and Jay-Z had dealings with each other and they were saying Jay-Z was trying to cut ties with him. Y'all know this is allegedly because I don't know these people in real life, but that's the things that been said and been going around the media. And also Neil and Usher was just named in Don Richards' lawsuit that she filed against Diddy like six days ago. Now she didn't say that they did anything in particular, but they was around when he was doing certain things. So anybody named that I feel that's been brought up in these lawsuits, I feel like they're going to be looking at and bringing in for questioning or things like that. But anyway, she said, During a dinner with Neil Usher and then CEO of Interscope Records, Jimmy Iveen Combs punched Ventura in the stomach, causing her to cry and double over in visible pain. The lawsuit alleges she was later escorted out of the restaurant while Combs socialized. Combs would later warn Richard to shut the F up and not meddle in his relationship after she encouraged Ventura to leave Combs. So her putting them in that little statement just right there is already adding them as a witness to the things that have been going on. But just like he threatened her and she never said nothing until now, maybe he could have threatened them too. So that's why they never said anything either. A lot of people never said anything because they were scared of him. But as you guys should know by now, because it's all over the blogs and media, he got arrested yesterday and he had a 14 page indictment, which they released to the public on today. And if you guys want to read it, y'all can go ahead and screenshot it, blow it up and read it for yourselves. I was going to read it, but I got a video that I want to show y'all of the U.S. Southern Attorney of New York. He's basically explaining what the indictment has in it. So... I'm not going to read all of that because that would be super long. But I'll just give y'all the gist of what's in it. And like I said, at the end of the video, I will play y'all his video. But to just read the gist of it, it says, Sean Diddy Combs, a hip-hop kingmaker, a three-time Grammy winner who was arrested in New York City on Monday, has been indicted on federal S trafficking and racketeering conspiracy charges, according to the court papers unsealed in the Southern District of New York on Tuesday. According to the indictment, Diddy abused, threatened, and coerced women and others around him to fulfill his actual desires, protect his reputation, and conceal his conduct. He allegedly used his media empire as a criminal enterprise whose members and associates engaged in and attempted to engage in, among other crimes, S trafficking, forced labor, kidnapping, arson, bribery, and obstruction of justice. So like I said in the beginning, Diddy got arrested on yesterday. He was seen before a judge today, which he pled guilty and he wanted to get out on bail, but the judge said no. So this article says Sean Diddy Combs will be held at the Metropolitan Detention Center in Brooklyn. Diddy Combs will be held by himself at the special housing unit in the Metropolitan Detention Center in Brooklyn until his next court appearance Wednesday afternoon. 
according to the law enforcement official. The special housing unit is separate from the general prison population and is used to house inmates who require additional protection, among other reasons. Many high-profile individuals have been temporarily held in MDC, including R. Kelly, Sam Bankman, Fried. Combs will appeal the decision to hold him without bail in front of the U.S. District Court Judge Andrew Carter on Wednesday. If the appeal is denied, Combs will be remanded back to the detention center. And y'all, Diddy, defense attorney, was not here for it. He got so many excuses and reasons to why he need to be out, but the judge ain't trying to hear that at all. So his attorney, Mark, asked the court to allow the client to remain out of bond prior to trial, saying that he has no plans to flee and had earned the court's trust. Combs came to New York less than two weeks ago, believing that the indictment was imminent, said Mark. The rapper came to surrender because he didn't want anybody to be hurt if he was arrested at home. He also said the indictment was arguably better than we imagined, given the flurry of lawsuits from multiple accusers over the past year. The attorney argued the 2016 assault video is not evidence of S trafficking, as prosecutors suggested, but evidence of Combs having more than one girlfriend and getting caught. So basically, he's trying to say that's, that shouldn't go as a trafficking charge. That should just go as an assault charge. So his attorney also said, his team is going to appeal the decision to hold the hip-hop artist and music mogul without bail. Judge Robin, and I'm not even about to say her last name to butcher it, but ruled on Tuesday that Combs will stay in custody while the case plays out. Combs was charged with racketeering, conspiracy, as trafficking, and transportation to engage in prostitution. So the attorney also said he's going to clear his name and we're going to stand by his side as he does. We believe in him wholeheartedly. He also reiterated that he believes Combs didn't do these things. Combs pleaded not guilty to all of the charges earlier today. Mark said the bail appeal would take place in the same courtroom on Wednesday in front of a different judge. And by him still saying that he don't believe Diddy did those things when he said he didn't believe Diddy did what he did to Cassie until the video came out proves that Diddy need to stay right there. So like I said, he kept trying to plead to the judge. He said he has never run from the challenge. And he will not run from this one. Instead, he takes these challenges head on. He moves toward them confidently and with the insurance that right is on his side. And like I said, he was saying that he was trying to convince the judge to let him get out on bail. His attorney offered to put him on home detention with a 50 million bond secured by his Miami residence. According to the motion, prosecutors previously argued that that was plainly insufficient. So Don Richards' attorney spoke to CNN after he got denied his bail. And he told CNN that his client is grateful that DOJ has decided to pursue charges against the media mogul and that she's looking forward to a fair trial. And more than anything, his client wants the truth to come out. So in his exact words, he said, it's been stressful and it's been tough. Her attorney said she subjected herself to a lot of ridicule, but seeing the DOJ come forward with an indictment has been really encouraging. She's happy to see that there has been a striking similarity between the indictment and the allegations that we made in our civil lawsuit. Fudali added, saying that his client is very encouraged at learning about the similarity between the allegations. A lot of the allegations are substantially similar, such as the S trafficking and the force of labor. Constricting their movement and such, Fudali said, so it looked like Mr. Diddy will be facing a long time and hopefully justice will get served for all parties that were involved unwillingly. Like Kim Porter, the people from making a band, Cassie, Mace, whether it was, you know, actual stuff or whether they just got done wrong by Diddy. Lil Rod, Don, and this lady right here, I can't remember her name right now, but she stood up for Cassie. It was Cassie friend. She wrote music and she just wanted to, you know, move up in the industry. But she said she's seen a lot of things and, and basically Diddy silenced her and she was scared to come out, talk. She was scared to go anywhere because of his threats and things like that. So, yeah, hopefully all these people get, you know, their justice in young Miami. She got to look out, watch out, too. And word on the curb is Lemio and the people from Baddies. They need to really, really watch out because they say Lemio is just as worse as Diddy, allegedly. And not saying that he's too much better, but is this what Ray J was trying to expose when he was going on them rants and making videos and videos? Then they was like trying to take down his page and all kind of stuff when he was trying to expose 
Lemio and Zeus Network. But anyway, y'all, here's the breakdown of the indictment from the U.S. District Attorney of New York. And y'all let me know what y'all feel about everything that I talked about in this video. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye. Of a three-count indictment charging Sean Combs with racketeering conspiracy, sex trafficking, interstate transportation for prostitution. The indictment alleges that between at least 2008 and the present, Combs abused, threatened, and coerced victims to fulfill his sexual desires, protect his reputation, and conceal his conduct. As alleged in the indictment, to carry out this conduct, Sean Combs led and participated in a racketeering conspiracy that used the business empire he controlled to carry out criminal activity, including sex trafficking, forced labor, kidnapping, arson, bribery, and the obstruction of justice. Let me say a little bit more about the charges. The indictment alleges that Combs abused and exploited women and other people for years, and in a variety of ways. As alleged, Combs used force, threats of force, and coercion to cause victims to engage in extended sexual performances with male commercial sex workers, some of whom he transported or caused to be transported over state lines. Combs allegedly planned and controlled the sex performances, which he called freak-offs, and he often electronically recorded them. The freak-offs sometimes lasted days at a time, involved multiple commercial sex workers, and often involved a variety of narcotics, such as ketamine, ecstasy, and GHB, which Combs distributed to the victims to keep them obedient and compliant. As alleged, when Combs didn't get his way, he was violent, and he subjected victims to physical, emotional, and verbal abuse so that they would participate in the freak-offs, and that Combs hit, kicked, threw objects at, and dragged victims, at times by their hair. On one occasion in March of 2016, that conduct was captured on video and later reported in the media, when the victim was attempting to flee. As alleged, these assaults often resulted in injuries to the victims, which took days or weeks to heal. In addition to the violence, the indictment alleges that Combs threatened and coerced victims to get them to participate in the freak-offs. He used the embarrassing and sensitive recordings he made of the freak-offs as collateral against the victims. And the indictment alleges that he maintained control over the victims in several ways, including by giving them drugs, by giving and threatening to take away financial support or housing, by promising them career opportunities, by monitoring their whereabouts, and even by dictating their physical appearance. Because of all of this, the indictment alleges that the victims did not believe they could refuse Combs without risking their security or facing more abuse. The indictment also alleges other acts of violence undertaken by Combs and others, including violence against witnesses to his abuse, kidnapping, and arson. The indictment alleges that on more than one occasion, Combs carried or brandished firearms to intimidate and threaten victims and witnesses. Now, Combs did not do this all on his own. As I mentioned, Combs has been charged with RICO conspiracy. He used his business and employees of that business and other close associates to get his way. Those individuals allegedly included high-ranking supervisors in the business, personal assistants, security staff, and household staff. The indictment alleges that those individuals facilitated the freak-offs. They booked the hotel rooms and stocked them with the supplies, including drugs, baby oil, personal lubricant, extra linens, and lighting. When the hotel rooms got damaged, they helped clean it up. They arranged for victims and commercial sex workers to travel for the freak-offs, and they delivered large quantities of cash to Combs to pay for the commercial sex workers. The indictment also alleges that they helped Combs cover up his crimes. During the March 2016 incident at the LA hotel that I mentioned earlier, a member of the hotel security staff intervened, and Combs attempted to bribe the staff member with a stack of cash to make sure that what happened was kept quiet. And as the indictment alleges, in late 2023, after public allegations were made about Combs' crimes, he and others pressured witnesses and victims to stay silent, including by making phone calls to witnesses and victims and giving them a false narrative of what they had experienced. And as alleged, Combs used others to help conceal his abuse by monitoring and preventing victims from leaving a location in order to hide their injuries or by locating and contacting a victim who had attempted to flee. As part of this investigation, in March of this year, special agents from HSI executed search warrants at Combs' residences in Miami and Los Angeles. They also executed a warrant for Combs' electronic devices. During those searches, agents seized evidence of the crimes charged in this indictment. They seized firearms and ammunition, including three defaced AR-15s and a large-capacity drum magazine. They also seized evidence of the freak-offs, electronic devices that contain images and videos of the freak-offs with multiple victims. And they seized cases and cases of the kinds of personal lubricant and baby oil that Combs' staff allegedly used to stock hotel rooms for the freak-offs, more than 1,000 bottles altogether.